what they realized was wrong with that is that in the people who don't drink at all, many of those people are not drinking because they're actually really unhealthy for another reason. Like they might have heart failure and they like don't want to drink because they don't want it to mix with their medication. Or they might have had a history of alcohol use disorder and they're actually in recovery. So they've already had some damage from alcohol and they are not drinking because of that. And so when you change the reference group, you actually make the, the sort of group that you compare people to, to people who very rarely drink. So it's not that they're not drinkers at all, but they drink you know, very, very light levels, then you start to see that those like health benefits of alcohol go away, especially if you look across all conditions. Are are you telling me that there's no healthy level of alcohol consumption? Yes. I would never say drinking alcohol is good for your health. That doesn't mean that drinking at what we call low risk levels can't be a part of a healthy lifestyle. So it's a slight, slight shift that like, don't fool yourself into thinking that drinking that glass of wine is like, going to exercise for 30 minutes. Like, it's not something that's going to promote your health. I think of it more like having dessert, eating bacon, going out in the sun. There are risks associated with all those activities. It doesn't mean that I would say you can never do any of that, but you need to understand what the risks are and then make choices for yourself. So I look at this glass of wine here and this pint of beer. Yep. If I drank one of these a day, not a huge amount, Um, I think what people tend to think is they think, well, it's only one, so my body will just flush it out and there'll be no adverse health consequences. Yeah. Is that true? Well, so part of the challenge is what we think of as one drink. So I think um, much like, you know, if you learn to read the serving size on a food, you realize that like, oh, a serving of ice cream is like a half a scoop. It's not like a (laughs) giant ice cream sundae. The same is true with alcohol. So um, in the UK, the kind of low risk drinking limits talk about units of alcohol, which is the equivalent of eight grams of alcohol. So how much of a drink has eight grams of alcohol? And to be in that low risk category, you have to be below 14 units. The problem is that glass of wine just eyeballing it, has several units of alcohol. So it is not a, even though we think of it as a single drink, it's probably, I mean, I have to guess, but it's probably like three units of alcohol. So if I have a glass of wine every day, I'll be over that limit then? You'd be right at that limit. The problem is most people don't drink just one glass. If you, um, you know, you have two glasses one day and then one glass one day and then three glasses one day because you're at a social function, all of a sudden you're actually quite a lot over that limit. So if you said that this this is roughly three units, yeah. roughly. And you get 14 a week. And you get 14 a week. Mm-hmm. So three times seven, mm-hmm. 21. Yeah. So yes, you're over if you're drinking that size. Yeah. Okay. So if I have this glass of wine every day, then I'd be over the UK limit of? Lower risk drinking. Lower risk drinking. So I'd be medium risk drinking. You'd be in what we call moderate risk, which is associated with pretty much every form of cancer, which I think people don't know. <laughs>